Okay, friends, last lesson in sinusoidals. The applications of these things, which we talked about on the very first day. So now we'll just go into them in a little bit more detail. Now, out of all of the cool applications of sinusoidal functions uh, that we've talked about in this class, where you've already seen the sound of my voice, predator prey populations, uh, radio waves, light waves, for whatever reason, it's got to be a Ferris wheel because we all ride Ferris wheels every day. Don't ask me why. I don't know why this is the go to sinusoidal application. So we're going to study this one pretty well. Okay. What you're going to do here is you are going to read this little paragraph about someone riding a Ferris wheel. You're going to draw me a pretty picture. You're going to fill in the chart and then come back, unpause the video, see if you did that all right. Then we'll pause the video again and you'll start filling these things in section by section. Okay, so draw me the graph, fill in the chart, hit pause, unpause when you're done. Okay, you should have tried to fill this all in. There's what it should look like, Sam's height above ground over time period intervals of 30 seconds is what I put in that table. And there's what your graph should look like. Again, notice that it's nice and smooth. It's a sinusoidal. There it is. Okay, now here's our job. Your job, not my job, your job is to now hit pause. And I want you to go through each of these sections piece by piece and make some very important connections. See you soon. Okay, friends, you should have tried this first piece here on average height. It says the highest point is seven and the lowest point is one. That's easy. We could read that off the table. So number two, what is the rider's average height? Well, I want you to think the other way to think of average is median. So it's halfway between seven and one. If you really wanted to use a formula, remember that's max plus min divided by two. That's four. The more important part is what part of the Ferris wheel does the average height correspond to? It's the middle of the wheel. Sometimes they describe that as the hub of the wheel. And what does the median value correspond to? It's always D. Okay, hit pause. Come back after you've tried amplitude. Okay, you've tried amplitude. We know that we've got two ways to find amplitude at this point. We can find the distance between the median value and the highest or lowest values, which is me just saying in class all the time, I'm just counting on my fingers. Or if you really wanted to, you could use a formula. I'm not a huge fan of it, but max minus min divided by two. Just make sure here that amplitude is always positive. There's no such thing as a negative amplitude. Using either of these methods, we find that the amplitude is three. So that would be seven minus one divided by two is three, if that's what you wanted to do. Well, what does that relate to? It's the radius of the wheel, also known as the A value. Boom. Okay, hit pause, try period. All right, the period. The period is the time it takes for the data repeat. We know that two methods, we could find the distance between two consecutive maxes or mins, or we could use the formula that's on my formula sheet. T is equal to two pi over B. Looking at the curve, we see that the period, well, how long did it take for this thing to repeat itself? Right? How long did it take for this thing to repeat itself? So it's always in the question here. It says, how long does it take to go around? Okay, well, it takes Sam 60 seconds to get from the bottom to the top, so it's going to take Sam 120 seconds to go around. Boom. Now, if I need the B value when I'm writing my equation, I rearrange my formula to that. So I would go 2 pi over 120 or B over 1, or sorry, B over 60. And they may ask us to round that, depends on the question. Okay, hit pause. Try the last one, starting point. Okay, last section, the starting point. It's in quotations because we don't really have a starting point, but we're gonna say that a starting point for a sine graph 
is on the median line on the y-axis going up. So I'll show you what I mean here. So I'm just going to draw a graph. Here is my median line. Here is our graph right here. We started at the bottom and we went up like that, right? So what I say to myself is, am I on the median line on the y-axis going up? No, that was not there. The median line is right there where it's crossing the median line. This thing's starting at a minimum. So does this thing, has it been shifted? Answer, yes. All right, now if we flip the page in our books, now you're into this practice section, okay? It's really, really important that you're looking at these Ferris wheel questions. They are so important, okay? Again, out of all of the cool applications for these things, Ferris wheel, you'll see I've got a few here in your book, are the ones that I don't know why. They just, on the diploma, on the test, they just care. Carousel, pretty much the same thing, right? Just in a different way. You've got a lot of questions here, but I would work my way through all of them. Okay, and then we're done that, friends. Then we're into our next unit, which will be a little bit more difficult. Okay, have fun with that one. See you next time.